Yup, what's good, original crew, man? We're back. How one bad episode ruined a podcaster's entire life. Now, I ain't gonna hold you. Not one video finna ruin us. You know what I'm saying? We've had people who want to cancel us because they don't agree with one video. And honestly, I always say people can't judge. You can't judge a an individual, especially an individual on the internet by one video. Mm. You will never get... Like, if you go into something trying to judge someone by one, one video, one episode, one whatever... Then that's you. Mm-hmm. It's not that person. That is on you. I don't think I don't like give them a chance. Be like, all right, I I didn't agree with your take on that. Let me go to the next one. I think agreeing with like disagreeing or agreeing with someone's take yeah. may be different than probably whatever it is that Transpired this person is. It, it's different than you having a an opinion and yeah. someone disagreeing with it or you just talking out of your backside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. So let. We'll see. We'll yeah. see, man. So with that being said, before we get into it, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go if you want to first support. All you have to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Like it with a thumbs up. But let's go. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about you. Ready? I'm ready. All right. It was the 84th episode of the H3 podcast. Host Ethan Klein chose to interview his favorite comedian, Bill Burr. And I was such a big fan of Bill Burr, obviously. Who is yeah. it? He's- well, we are... Who did this? Was I that, can't re- did Patrick do that? I, I want to say. Yeah, that, he touched on only, it in, in his Bill yeah. Burr. He did a Bill Burr video, and I think he touched on it. But it didn't necessarily, like, ruin. You know, it probably took a little. That's well, why, like, sometimes Sunny. It I'd probably like, took, like, a little hit or something or whatever. But It I don't was a learning it, experience. A learning experience. You I don't know think what it saying? ruined his entire life. Like, yeah. Mm. Legend. But after 54 minutes of talking, Ethan's life had been altered permanently. That's when I started taking antidepressants after that episode. Really? Yeah. Now, you'll need to remember a specific date. The 12th of September 2018. It was not only the day when the episode was first posted, but it was also a day when viewers were already annoyed at Ethan for something he'd done prior. You see, just five days beforehand on the 7th of September, Ethan used his H3H3 Productions main channel to advertise a game they'd been building which was especially annoying since they hadn't uploaded anything else over the previous three months. We waited three months for a 2.5 minute ad. I can't skip the ad for some reason. So disappointing that we wait for three months and this is a standalone video. This is something that belongs tagged at the end of a good old H3H3 vid, with the backlash prompting Ethan to respond via Twitter. This therefore established that in the same week as interviewing Bill Burr, Ethan was not only increasingly prone to criticism, but his confidence had also been crushed. There was a lot going on in my head. Which was certainly awful timing, as Ethan was set to face his toughest guest so far. Bill Burr had been running his own Monday morning podcast since May of 2007, meaning he had 11 years of podcasting experience compared to Ethan's year and a half. Ethan skipped all the side quests and went straight for the boss. Ethan was therefore extremely nervous from the moment the episode started. I'm so- that's one thing I always say about when it comes down to like YouTubers and stuff. Like, um, a lot of people don't go through the process of of growth. Like I was talking about a, mm-hmm. a, a whole different ballpark, and I was remember I think it was last night I was talking about like you have to go through those same trials and tribulations that you, you can't just step into uh, a certain lane just because of your personality and your likeness mm-hmm. and expect people to automatically respect you. Just because, hey, I already got a following. Best. When you're a rookie in the game of whatever you're doing. So, I, and I, like, we see a lot of this going on right now with the different uh, content creators and different, uh, I guess, platforms and different people. Yeah. Uh, just, like, a reference one with Joe Budden and Kai. Yeah. It's more of a, when it comes down to that situation, I think Joe kind of looking at it like, y'all new into the game, but y'all don't respect and that's where it's a it's a lot of back and forth with the younger generation 
and older generation, then you got our generation that's right in between yeah. that we still get that respect, but we kind of understand where the younger generation comes mm -hmm. coming from. But we also understand like you have to work to you know what I'm saying, putting that work. And I guess when it comes down to that, that we, we like I guess like say for instance Joe's situation, we respect the fact that you know what I'm saying you built yourself a platform, where you, yeah. but you stepping into the music industry platform not knowing. And having did the work or study and gaining knowledge of the music industry, but to to want to have a voice on it. Re, re, reason why I say that is so many people who are going into these lanes that season people who have been in there and, mm -hmm. and like y'all just automatically want to have like him want to have Bill Burr. Yeah. Instead of building Build, building, building up, your way up and to to get to a Bill certain Burr. point to yeah. get one one yeah. and a half years. I understand you doing podcasts. You've been doing podcasts. There's still a lot of growth you can... Like, even with us, we do reactions, but it's a... Like, I feel like we still have growth we can do, even though mm -hmm. we've been doing it for three years. There's a lot more room for growth for us. Yeah, most definitely. Always. So, so um, I want to say we veterans in the game, but I think we know a lot more than some. But I feel as though we, we have a long ways to go. And I think that's where or just, it's... Or just ourselves, period. Just know a lot more than... Yeah, somebody who started a year and a half we ago. Started, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I guess that's when you're referencing that and that aspect, H three uh, or Ethan with the H three podcast, y'all want to y'all trying to jump and chase the views more than learning the game that you're in. You get what I mean? Studying it, studying it, learning mm -hmm. it, yeah. like learning it to let allowing yourself to grow into something you've never done before. Yeah. Neurotic. I am nervous. I'm nervous right now. Okay. I'm very nervous. <laughs> yes. I don't think that's going to help. How do, you, how do you, was there ever, <laughs> no, trust me, I'm, I'm on edge. Only made worse given Ethan and his wife were both massive fans of Bill Burr's show. Like we were listening to his podcast every day during uh. that time. Uh. Ethan therefore also began the episode with a compliment, although there was a reason this made Bill somewhat uncomfortable. In a Hollywood Reporter interview, it was stated, even a compliment can potentially rub Burr the wrong way. As Bill explained, if someone was really nice, I would just be like, get away from me. If someone was an asshole, it's like, oh, that seems familiar. For whatever reason, I don't like being complimented, which killed the episode from the second the podcast started. Ethan came into this interview too much as a, as a fan, as a listener of Bill's podcast, and Bill came into this podcast with an attitude of, I don't know who you are, I don't give a shit. As mentioned, it quickly became obvious that Bill didn't want to be there, which, as highlighted by Red Bar, is the perfect mixture for a terrible show. Bill Burr seems to be in a nasty little mood. And that could ruin the whole interview. Look at him. Look how miserable he is. Whether or not Bill was in a bad mood will be up for debate later. Although as the interview continued, something became obvious. Bill Burr wasn't going to- Do you feel as though Bill probably was in a bad, bad mood? I mean, it could, could be a bad mood or it could yeah. be one of those things. You know how some people kind of like, like, uh, Especially since he's such a veteran, right? Mm -hmm. Let me see how you will handle... You know how some people kind of like test people unknowingly? Like, I don't know. Because I feel like with Bill, with, with Bill, it's kind of like you have to do like that reverse type of like... I don't know. I, 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 I can't I, I can't read Bill. I don't know if he was in a bad mood and didn't want to be there. Or it was just like, like let me see how you handle... Like, I, I really don't know. Because when we had seen the clips um, yeah. the first time we had seen this... I couldn't read it then, and I still can't. I don't think he was in a bad mood. I think he's more of a, all right, I, I've been on the same side. You've been on right. Right. And so you're already overly being a fan instead of, like, allowing yourself to control the show. That's where it comes from, that seasoned veteranship in a game, and you going through and working your way up. Like, Bill is a top tier. You should have done a lot more smaller people mm -hmm. to be able to build your way up to a Bill Burr. To so, a Bill. so when you're in a room with a Bill Burr, you're not fanned out, but you're. It's like, hey, I'm a controlling the show. I'm more professional with it. Mm -hmm. Instead, of, like I understand, yeah, you can compliment someone. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing wrong with it, but you also have to understand and study the person that you're interviewing. I was just about to say that it's cool to like, you know, some people love compliments, yeah. but just if you bringing this person on, yeah. do your research and know who this person is, how to handle this person, the like, what like their thought process, their and how thought they, process, how they, how they actually. Uh, react to certain situations. Yeah. How, how they hold demeanor. Like know that stuff before bringing them on because 
it can like a bill can take over the whole show and just be like a disaster yeah. as far as like this is your show because he can't run the show you have to right like, you have to know like, be assertive okay. and be able to control yes. the show you know yeah. what I'm saying but he already figured like alright this is gonna okay, be one this, of these yeah let me just and I don't want do this, what I do yeah. best or I don't want to do this and or he I shut don't down. want to do it and he could have shut down could have Although as the interview continued, something became obvious. Bilbo wasn't going to blindly agree with everything Ethan said and would always give his honest opinion, even if it hindered the course of the episode. He's not being a good interviewee. You can be gracious and maybe the question's not perfect, but you can, you know, accommodate it with like a good answer and put it, bring it back to a good place. He doesn't like to do that at all. Ethan got his first taste of this when suggesting the following point. Bully's almost important in a way, isn't it? Like you gotta allow kids to give each other shit. I don't think as a parent you ever allow it. Sure. Although it became more obvious 10 minutes later when the two started talking about the dog whisperer. Does he even know anything? I also wonder, does he just pretend like he knows? Well, I, I think the guy knows what he's doing. Okay. All right. He got a TV yeah. show. You're a really cynical guy, man. I I thought you were that down. Is, I that thought is you were a lot. Be down. That is a lot for me to say that. I like, thought you're you like, were going to be down, but apparently I'm cynical even to Bill Burr. Given the podcast was being streamed in real time, viewers gave their live reactions in a Reddit thread reading, Am I the only one who's finding this podcast super awkward? What is wrong with Ethan? He's not laughing at any of Bill's jokes, and it's like he's lost all conversational skills, prompting a top comment reading, Yeah, there's no chemistry between Bill and Ethan. However, That is true, though. You do have to... Like when you interview them, you have to find a common ground. Also, that's the reason why I always say like um, I don't think like I don't think you necessarily need a degree to do a lot of things nowadays. But I I do feel like you do need to go get some education behind something, whatever your passion is. Take you a couple classes, get educated on how. Like say for instance, you know what I'm saying? You want to go into podcasting, mm -hmm. or you want to uh, go into like. I guess nowadays it is considered podcast no matter what it is, but more to like interviewing people, yeah. stuff like that. You should take journalism classes. You will understand how, like me, I've taken journalism classes. Do I actively like relay it? Hey, hey baby. It's okay. Come here. Come here. Come here. No, no. We don't need that. Just come here. <laughs> oh, it's the people who, he really don't like them. Come here. Don't, don't pick his head. I can't pick him up, really. Come I got, up here. I got the cool. Uh-oh. But what I was saying was, even though I took journalism classes, yeah. I don't fully use my journalism skills 100% either, right? Yeah. So, because I'm very long-winded. I'm more long-winded than I should be. Right. And I don't have to be. But mm -hmm. I, I do feel like some people should take journalism classes and media classes and learn how to interview someone. Because you can't take classes and learn that. True. And I also think kind of with this with this interview, kind of where the failure like already happened was the fact that he already came in the interview nervous. Mm -hmm. Probably super wanted to be like uh polished and uh perfect. Try, try, trying to try because he's already trying too hard because he's already a fan. So it's like this thing like I wanna impress you. So you kinda like everything else just goes out the window. Just look yeah. at him as You're anybody else. Yeah. yeah, just look at him as anybody else. And even though this is Bill, look at him as anyone else that you may bring on. Look at him as don't even look at him. This is just a a, a friend that I'm bringing yeah. on. Even though he, you know, so that you don't forget that this is a professional setting that I'm I'm trying to interview someone because I really think that's what took like the turn for the worst yeah. is the fact that you was already kind of fanned out on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so, fan the fan mechanism of it ruined. I feel feel like it ruined the first impression. Yeah. You put it down now. Things only got worse from here, as after 54 minutes of talking, the following exchange occurred. It seems like you're in love with your daughter, hearing you talk about her on the podcast. Jesus yeah. Christ, well, you're pretty perceptive. You think you care about well, your own I, child. Listen, more than that, okay? Because again, you, you're this character. You gush, you gush over your daughter. Not everyone gushes. Did your dad gush over you? My dad actually at work did. And uh, he also had a zillion kids, so I mean, yeah. Really? How many siblings do you have? I don't know, dude. The internet's too fucking weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, not compromise means, your privacy. Yeah, by all talking about it. Is there anybody you can cut this out? I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, dude. I, yeah, there's fucking lunatics out there. Okay. Well, off the air. Off the air, I'll cut it. <laughs> all right. Jeez. 
I love how surprised he is. Jason, well, you actually, can mention the amount. Absolutely, absolutely. Did somebody prefer not to? Prefer not to. All right. I don't know why that took out so <laughs> flat. With Bill being direct and private and Ethan being curious and open, the conversation failed to flow for a pretty obvious reason. You could not have picked two totally different people to get together and have an interview. This could be observed when Ethan doubled down on the compliments. The great, great, greatest. Bill Burr. Oh, Jesus. I do mean that, by the way. Right. I know it makes you uncomfortable. But... It does. Although there was one final question that put the podcast in a casket. 12 years beforehand in 2006, Bill Burr had performed a stand-up set in Philadelphia where he basically roasted the audience to their face and in response he was booed by everyone. The set has since been considered legendary given Bill would even go there. However, when Ethan brought it up on their episode, Bill Burr wasn't looking to talk about it. It was when you were getting booed by by thousands oh god, of people I was, I was hoping Philly. you were. I was like, when you said I, my favorite you YouTube video, I was like, oh god, not the Philly thing again. Mm. <laughs> now I hate you. Oh no. I love. Oh, what can I do? I love that. I'm joking. I'm fucking with you. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh, no. But do well, you? But, but, no. Bring a hat no, I'm not gonna. I'm not, not gonna ask people you. People are bullet. I did that boat before. <laughs> you've you've talked about this a lot. I didn't yes. realize. No, but I go ahead. Uh, let's well, do it. Well, let's now do it. I, I frankly, I like, you know, I, I like. You know what? A lot of celebrities hate those same questions every interview type shit. Yeah. But yeah. now you, you don't stand out amongst anybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, ask me like what what was my favorite stand up? You know what I'm saying? Then also say like me. My one of my favorite joints with Bill Burr is not the Philadelphia rant, even though we did react to it. But it was uh, I. Like the one he was talking one about. One where he went up. Uh... No, the one he just showed with the play. He was talking about Harlem and like. Is, oh, that the one, about... is that the one he was saying he was going to meet a girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one and of then my the lotion too. and yeah, all that. Yeah, that's one of that, my favorite like, too. That's, that would be somebody saying, oh, okay, that's different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Most people don't speak on that. And then just ask them. Like, it's hard to, like, me to come up with questions about Bill because I, I, I'm not in the mind space of, uh, that study to mm -hmm. even want to interview him. But since, but it's, but, but my thing is, it'll be easier if you're already like a fan of someone and you already support them and kind of like know yeah. their background. It should be a little bit easier. And I feel like the questions should be different than everyone else. Especially you when, know what I'm saying? Especially when you know they get interviewed a lot. Yeah. That's the, that's the key. He, he already And gets one thing about like Bill personality, I feel like. The the personalities definitely clash. Oh, you because think so? he, yeah, because I feel like Bill, like if you're like so very sarcastic. He's very sarcastic and I get it. And it wouldn't hurt my feelings because I'm I feel like I'm sarcastic and you I got a dry to, humor as what you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like I am, I'm very sarcastic, and I feel like my like I kind of got like a dry sense of humor sometimes. So yeah. I I can I get him, so it doesn't rub me the wrong way. I guess, and also I'm not in the setting at the yeah, moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the personalities just kind of clash a little bit. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, true, true. Skip yeah. it. I like making you uncomfortable. <laughs> well, you what am I supposed thing. to? Well, what am I? <laughs> yeah, right. That, you yeah. Know you can... And now what do you want me to be? Well, what was going through your head, Bill, when you're getting booed by all those people? Uh, I don't know. Yet the two completed the episode by insisting that things had gone well. I almost made it through without I making an ass of myself. I got so close. What are you talking about? I had a great time. I did too. I really did. I hope you did. I'm worried about you. I did. Thank God I, you got... I'm playing Wait. it up. I'm playing it up. The audience reaction, however, couldn't have been more negative. Long time H3H3 fan, but I'm really struggling staying with the podcast. We all knew that Ethan wasn't a great podcast partner slash interviewer, but today it's just horrible. Bill's realness really contrasts Ethan's wacky performance, which is furthered by a meme reading Who Would Win? Stand-up comedian, actor, voice artist, writer, musician, producer and social critic, industry veteran at 25 plus years, or a comedian who dresses up in costumes and says the memes. In a different post, you slash Skykid200 highlighted, you know you messed up when you make Bill Burr cringe, and in the one and only post questioning, am I the only one around here who didn't think the interview with Bill Burr was bad, the top comment simply stated yes. On the video itself, KG stated, this just made me like Bill more than I already did, although there were others who thought Bill was the one who messed up the interview. If, you, if y'all already felt as though the, the eat is not a good interview or... He shouldn't be doing it. Why are you like? Why are y'all tuning into the podcast? Then y'all should tune out to him and say, "Hey," or let him know, like, "This ain't good for you." 
like if y'all not really rocking with him as the interviewer, stop watching. He'll he'll be like, all right, this ain't for me. Yeah. Oh, I'm wondering is it like other things that are keeping. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, How yeah, some yeah, people yeah. like, you know, maybe I tune in for this. I tune in for this, or maybe um, just because of his personality. I'm a, I'm a fan of Ethan, so fan, I'm just always a fan support. of like something. Yeah. So maybe that's why, yeah. and they just like stick around, you know, because it's not like horrible. He's not like harming or doing anything. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's kind of like I'm gonna support regardless. Yeah. But mm. yeah. Crazy though. Shady Bill Burr is get a grip. There's going to be a million people watching this. If you don't want to do it, don't come. Don't be a crank. There's no room for cranks in these interviews. The unpopular opinion was that Bill Burr was the douche as he was purposely trying to be superior to Ethan the entire time. And the sibling shit, that was a dumbass overreaction by Bill. I know how many siblings Bill Burr has. Let's use this info to find him somehow. Bill came off as that baby boomer kind of guy who doesn't quite get what you are saying and to compensate tries to make you feel uncomfortable. This was also argued by another user who wrote, I'm curious, if I know the amount of siblings of a person, what would that kind of information ever benefit me, even if I was someone who would have vicious thoughts in their head? Ridiculously overreacted, although as was highlighted in the comments, Bill certainly has the right to his own privacy. Who was at fault wasn't important anyway. All that mattered was the interview went so poorly, Ethan cancelled all of his following podcast guests, I was cancelling episodes after that, and instead hosted seven weeks worth of episodes with just him and his wife, one of which addressing how the show had become hated. It feels like nobody likes this podcast and everybody wants it to go away, but somebody likes it. I mean, people watch it, right? I mean... There's a few out there. This person likes it. This was addressed in detail only two videos later, in which Ethan didn't reference the Bill Burr episode, but explained that something had derailed his life. About two, three months ago is when when I kind of hit rock bottom and I was like, I was just so miserable that I was so tired. (coughs) I didn't no longer want it to be myself. As a result of this unspecified event, Ethan had begun using antidepressants. So I had this bottle of antidepressants in my bedside and I said, you know, after dealing with this and hitting rock bottom, I just, I started taking it. Which was the only alternative to ditching the podcast completely. I have thought about quitting the podcast, honestly. A lot. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's been such a pain. It's been such a pain. It's been so painful at times. Ethan instead doubled down on the broadcasting by discussing his Bill Burr experience with the most unlikely of people, Theo Vaughn. You see, Theo had... I don't think I ever got to the point of allowing, like, the comments or negative comments to be like, ah... I don't, I don't know if I want to do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I might get to the point where I'm like, I don't want to do a particular like genre or content of stuff we do. But and so I tune all out together. with that. But, yeah. but all together, just say, hey, I'm going to phase out. Hell no. Nah. And, and Enough I, y'all. Uh, but, but, the <laughs> negative people. Yeah. But and that's the thing. A lot of people take... Um, Criticism. I guess you could say criticism. Like I, I use that loosely because or a negativity. lot of people. Yeah, I use criticism loosely because a lot of people will say things and like I'm just giving you c- criticism, but you're not, not giving crit- me criticism. Yeah. You're just complaining. being negative and complaining about nothing. Because you're not getting your way. Yeah, but um, a lot of people take situations and incidents and things differently, and it affects them differently. Mm-hmm. So that's like going into things. You really gotta like build that tough skin and like. Like, not saying just be like, oh, nothing affects me, but yeah. just really build that tough skin, though. Yeah. Own disaster podcast with Bill, where Bill also acted harshly towards Theo for asking fairly innocent questions. Do you keep a weapon on yours or no? On what? In your, uh, I don't know if you have a helicopter or if you rent a helicopter. Do I really have to answer that? He knows goddamn well I don't have a weapon. Why are you doing this? You don't? You never have a gun. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, obtuse really to think you might have a weapon in there with you think about it yeah think about it <laughs> okay, all right. you think about it all right. yeah no okay Theo and Ethan therefore met to discuss what had happened, where Ethan confirmed his rock bottom moment was because of the Bill Burr episode. I went into therapy after that episode. I'm not Did even you really. I'm not even being kidding. I mean, I, I, I was having a depressive episode for a long time, right? And I had these antidepressants next to my bed. And after that episode with Bill Burr, I came home, and I that's when I started taking antidepressants, and I went to therapy. 
Wow. It was soul crushing. Ethan then explained why the interview was so tough for him. When he sees an opening, he will, he like attacks. Yeah. He is unlike anyone else I've ever interviewed because he's not willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. He will expose any chinks in your armor. And that the hardest part to deal with was how the audience reacted. It didn't feel that bad, but it was the reaction, my, the audience reaction to it afterward. However, for those revisiting the original podcast, Ethan admitting to therapy opened a brand new point of criticism. H3 just said bullying is important. That's rich considering he needed therapy and antidepressants after a simple conversation with Bill Burr. It's ironic that Ethan said sometimes kids need to be bullied when he later cried about how hard the Bill Burr interview was. The fact that he went into therapy after this interview is crazy lol, although Ethan was preparing for a shot at redemption. Exactly one year after the first Bill Burr interview, Ethan made a post on Instagram reading, it was an honor to be fat shamed today by the great Bill Burr, confirming the two had done another interview. Surprisingly, it was Bill Burr who suggested the redo. And then Bill Burr reached out to us to come back on a second time. He reached out to us. And the second one, everyone thought went great. They said it was the redemption episode. Ethan therefore reframed the first interview as a positive learning experience. From that episode though, I've had a lot of growth. I don't take it back. The Bill Burr thing. Specifically. You don't take the Bill Burr thing back. No, no. Especially given how it changed his day-to-day -day life. Taking antidepressants going to therapy was like the best choice I ever made for me and my family and professionally too. I mean, it's made everything better. Mm. Right. It's always, you know, good to have a... Hey man, with that being said, hey, y'all let us know how y'all feel about it, what y'all thought about it in front of... Let us know in the comment section down below. You can take... It's all about, you can't take, let things uh, hinder you in life, man. You got to keep moving forward. That's the biggest thing I can say from it. He, he, at the end, he found the positive. So, yeah. he found the positive in it. So, yeah. I guess that's all that matters. Hey, again, spell us up. Let us know y'all thoughts about it in the comment section. But, as always... I had to go with the name DJ Nikki. This is we are we are. Had to go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't neglect me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar 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 dollar.